What's happening guys, Oxford King here. And in this Monster Hunter Wilds video, we're gonna be going over the best mods that I'm using right now in Monster Hunter Wilds. We're gonna be going over how to get a better FOV in the game. We're gonna go over how to get true ultra wide. We're also gonna be going over how to enable frame gen with DLSS if you're on a 20 series card or and or a 30 series card. We can do all of these things in this video. I'll make sure to have timestamps below. So go ahead and just drag that around and find out what section is most important to you. I'll also have links. If this video was helpful, please drop a like and share this video with others so they can get their eyes on this video to help them out with a better MH Wilds experience. Let's get started. So the first program that I want you to check out is the RE framework. A lot of you guys already know about this program, but some of you do not. And the video as of today will have the version 01073. It may be a different version for you later down the road, okay? What we're gonna do is have you come to this screen here, scroll down a little bit and click on the one that says MH Wilds. Be sure to make sure that's that one and not the one above it that says MH Rise. So make sure you click on MH Wilds. Go ahead and download that zip. Now, once you download it, go ahead and extract that folder. It'll look just like this right here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the zipped one here and open up the folder context right here. And in here, you're gonna have several files and one folder. The next step is go ahead and locate where you have Monster Hunter Wilds installed. So if you don't know where it's at, you can simply bring up Steam, right click Monster Hunter Wilds, go to properties and then installed files, click on browse off to the right, it'll take you straight to the directory of where the game is installed. Now for ease of use, what I have here is on the right side is the downloaded folder. On the left side is the install directory of the game. Now on the right side, what you're gonna do is grab only one file for RE framework to work. Super simple. Go ahead and grab this file right here that says dinput8.dll. Go ahead and copy that file and then bring it over to where the game is installed and simply paste it in that directory. For me, I already have that file. It's asking if I wanna replace it. So yeah, cool, I'm gonna go ahead and replace it. That's step number one to get RE Framework installed. In a bit, I'm gonna go over in-game of the settings that I have for FOV and ultra wide a little bit later. Step number two, come over to Nexus Mods website, make sure that you are signed in and you're gonna come over to this page here where it says DLSSG to FSR3. You're basically replacing these files. This is to allow us to use DLSS and frame gen together in the game, especially for those that have a 20 series card and a 30 series card. I'm on a 3080 Ti. So what we're gonna do is come over to this site here, scroll down, click on the files tab, scroll down a little bit further and you have several options under the main files section. So to keep it simple, scroll down until you see the one that says universal in parentheses. Once you find that, go ahead and click on manual download. And then next screen, you're gonna click on slow download. Once you have this installed, it'll be a zipped folder. Go ahead and unzip this and it'll come out just like this here you see on screen. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the zip file to keep it clean for us. Now, once you open up this folder, you're gonna see the following context. You're gonna see several folders here and a file right here. Like the steps before, we're gonna have the left side of the screen of the install directory, and the right side of the screen is gonna be what we downloaded recently. Now, what you're gonna do here is you're gonna find the folder that says DLL underscore version, this one right here. Let's go ahead and open that up. Now we have several files here. So what we're gonna do is we are going to highlight the one that says DLSS underscore, this long one here, this one that says AMD is better, grab that one and then grab the one that says version.dll. You're gonna copy these two and simply paste it in the directory. I already have them here as asking, do I wanna replace it? Yes. So this step right here will allow us to get frame gen with DLSS on a 20 and 30 series card. Now, if you wanna get the latest DLSS in your game, you can come over to this site right here and grab DLSS Swapper. Go ahead and come here and scroll down. And what you're gonna do here is you're gonna download this one right here where it says DLSS Swapper 1.1.6 6.0 installer exe. You're going to go ahead and download this. Once you have DLSS Swapper installed, it looks just like this here on screen. And what you're going to do here is go ahead and select the Monster Hunter Wilds game in here. And then you see where it says DLSS, go ahead and click this box and, and grab the very, very top one here. And once you do that, you're going to click the button called swap, and then you'll have the version 310.2.1 
DLSS version. You can also grab the FSR latest one as well while you're in here. Just click on FSR and grab the latest FSR. And you can also grab XCSS if you choose to do so. In addition to that, you can even grab the DLSS frame gen right here. The latest one as of this video is going to be 310.2.1, just like that. Hit swap. And now you'll see both of these versions matching right here. Go ahead and hit close. You can either close this window or minimize it completely your choice. Now, if you don't want to use DLSS swapper and you like using the NVIDIA profile inspector instead, I would recommend using this program right here called NVIDIA Profile Inspector Revamped and simply come to this page here and grab this latest zip file right here called nvpirevamp.zip. Go ahead and download that. Once you download that program, you're going to look for the NVIDIA Profile Inspector program that looks just like this on your screen. Go ahead and double click that and the program looks just like this right here. Now, you can either use the global driver profile, base profile settings if you want to do that, or you can look for Monster Hunter Wild's profile. To do that, left click in this box right here on the top left hand corner, type in Monster Hunter, and then in this list, you're going to look for Monster Hunter Wilds. Now, once you're in here, make sure that this green section has the right executable. For me, I have the Monster Hunter Wilds beta.exe and Monster Hunter Wilds. EXE. If you do not have this, what I want you to do is click on this plus symbol where it says add application to current profile. That's if you don't have it already. Click that button and then simply grab this executable right here where Monster Hunter Wilds is installed. Click that and hit open. I already have that link so that's giving me an error saying you already have this. Now the next thing that I like to do for this program is come down here to this point two section called DLSS overrides. Now what I like to do here is click on the SR latest DLL. You don't have to do this. It's optional. I just do it because well it just gives me the warm fuzzies knowing hey this could work. I don't know. I tried it off. I tried it on. It didn't really seem to matter. So I left this option on. But if somebody actually knows like yes off yes on drop a comment let everybody know. The next one up is the SR preset. This is called latest preset right here. Go ahead and drop this down. You have all of these options. You have several choices here. You can use the version 310 plus. You can come down here and click on the latest preset, which is going to be preset K as of this video. I always click on the one that says latest preset just out of habit. That's pretty much what I do. Now, this next section here is optional. It's called SR scale factor. This is the DLSS part. When you drop this down, you'll see that you have default, DLAA, quality, balance, performance, ultra performance. I always leave this on default. That way you have full control over that in the game as far as like balance goes, quality goes. That way you can do that. But if you don't want to do that, you can force it to what you want. For instance, you can force it to DLAA or quality or balance, whatever you want to do. But again, I leave it on default just for my taste. Now, your next step is to come up here to the top right corner and hit apply changes. Okay, now once you're in the game, you're going to notice the RE framework on the top left hand corner. It looks just like this right here. And to bring this up, you can actually hit the insert key off and on just like that right there. And then what you're going to do after this, for the sake of this video, I'm going to go ahead and take this away because I first want to cover the frame gen part with DLSS. There's a couple things I want to talk about that's very important. So once you get into the game, go ahead and select on options right here. Right at the very, uh, right here, the fourth option here. Now, what you're gonna do is tab over to the graphics tab, come down to the upscaling part and select DLSS. If you did the DLSS swapper or the NVIDIA profile inspector, you're gonna have the 310.2.1 version like you see on your screen right now. Okay, that's what I have. And then you're gonna tab down to frame generation and enable it because we installed the mod in the prior step. We now have frame gen on the 20 and 30 series card, okay? Your upscaling mode is entirely up to you, okay? Play around with this. Quality, balance, performance, ultra performance, whatever is best for you, okay? Now, once you do this, this is very important because I noticed that when I did not do this next step, the game would crash. So once you enable these two options, what I want you to do is go ahead and back out of the game and quit the game, go back to your desktop. Now, once you're back in the game, go ahead and go back into options. I wanna go over some settings that I have for my 3080 Ti setup. And by the way, some of you guys may be wondering what my PC specs are. It's right there on the screen. We have an Intel 13th gen Core i9 3900K. We have 64 gigs of RAM, 3080 Ti. The VRAM is about 12 gigs, latest driver as of today. So there's my specs, okay? 
So what I did for really good performance is I did put it on quality. I just like how it looks overall, but sometimes I do go back down to balance, okay? So I do juggle between the two. I do not have ray tracing turned on, although it looks decent, but it's not that great, so I turned it off. Now the texture quality, I'm gonna be honest with you, every time I put this on the highest one, that DLC, my frames tank quite a bit, so I disabled it and I went back down to high. I have everything else on highest quality, so the filtering quality is on highest, mesh quality on highest, fur quality on high, tabbing over to page two, go all the way to the very top, my sky cloud quality is on high, and then grass tree quality high, grass tree sway is enabled, wind simulation quality high, surface quality is on high, sand snow quality on highest, water effects enable, render distance I have on highest, shadow quality I drop down to high, distance shadow quality I turn to low, shadow distance I have on medium, Ambient light quality I have on high, contact shadows is enabled, ambient occlusion on high, tabbing over to the third page, I have bloom set to high, you can turn this low off, doesn't really matter. I do have motion blur off, although I didn't really see a performance difference, but it is what it is. I don't like vignettes in my game, I have it turned off. Screen space reflection is on, the scattering of all this stuff here, the screen space uh, separable subsurface scattering <laughs> is turned on. Depth of field on. Now this one here, volumetric fog can be a resource hog right here. I turned it down to low. I saw a performance boost with that on low. Variable ray shading is entirely up to you. I don't like it when the graphics are already, you know, kind of deprecated. So you can play around with this. You will get a little bit of like better performance, but I didn't like how the game looked with it on. So I left it off. That's what I did for better performance. Now let's go over the RE framework. Go ahead and hit the insert key and bring up this menu here, okay? And you can simply drag your mouse to the bottom right corner to make this a little bit larger, just like so, all right? Now, what I did for the FOV is the following. Let me go ahead and move this over here so you can see what I'm talking about. So what I did was I came down to graphics right here, and for ultra wide users in particular, check this out. When you disable this, this is your default FOV, just like this right here, right? It's okay, it could be a little bit better, right? So what I did was, is I checked this box right here where it says ultra wide FOV aspect ratio, click that, and then the other two is the vertical FOV and override FOV. From here, you'll simply just drag this slider in or out depending on whatever is comfortable for you. I tend to keep it around 1.3, I thought that was pretty good. This will also affect cutscenes as well, so be careful with that, all right? If you do not, have an ultra wide monitor, we got you covered, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uncheck these buttons here and we're gonna go ahead and collapse that. Now, if you're not on an ultra wide monitor and you want better FOV, go ahead and click the one that says camera, all right? And if you don't want vignette, you can enable this and hit disable vignette if you don't want vignette. But if you want global FOV change, click this button right here that says use custom global FOV like that and simply just drag this from left to right to whatever global FOV that fits your play style. I hope this video was helpful, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.